Well, Dr. Ben Springgate has been with us since this pandemic started, answering your questions about it. He's the Chief of Community and Population Medicine at LSU Health Sciences Center, and he's back with us this morning taking your questions. Thank you so much for returning this week, Dr. Ben. Thank you. We saw the biggest total jump in deaths from Saturday to Sunday with 68. We just heard Eric mention it. What does that mean? Are our efforts not working or are we peaking? Um, our efforts are going to continue to work. Um, it, it takes a while for the benefits of our um, mitigation strategies, which are staying at home, social distancing, washing hands, and disinfecting commonly tough surfaces, touch surfaces. It takes a while for those to work. So we're going to continue to see the benefits, um, but it, we have to allow the benefit to appear in these official numbers. All right, let's get to the viewer questions. This viewer wants to know, they said, I've heard the virus can be seasonal. I've also heard you can't get it again after recovering from it. Is it possible you'll be able to get it again in another season after battling it in a previous season? Uh, we first and foremost, we don't yet have evidence that this is a seasonal virus. It's very possible that this is a virus that can be transmitted year round. We're hoping that it may be seasonal, but we do not yet have evidence of that. Secondly, um, we're also waiting to see the benefit of immunity. So we're hoping that if someone becomes infected, that they will at least be partially immune, maybe even fully immune to a subsequent infection. But so far, we do not have evidence of that. That's something that the scientific community and the medical community are working on to learn more about presently. All right, this is scary. The Bronx Zoo says a tiger has tested positive for COVID-19. Does that mean it's possible your pets can get it as well? Um, there are reports that animals can um, become infected by the COVID-19 virus. However, um, there's no evidence that the virus can go from a pet to a human as yet. So okay, um, the guidance that, we, that I've read so far suggests that if someone becomes very ill with COVID-19, probably someone else should take care of their pets um, so that they don't risk you know, the possibility that their own pet may, may become infected. Um, and uh, that person can then wash the animal with an appropriate um, animal shampoo, for example, to try to make sure that it's any virus is off of the animal's fur. All right, thank you very much. Another question, can a non-washable mask be sanitized by spraying disinfectant on it? Different hospital systems are using a variety of approaches to try to reduce their utilization rate of our masks. Um, so in the healthcare settings, a variety of approaches are being promoted. For people at home, um, it's better probably if you're going to use a mask uh, that's you know for reducing the spread for each person to wear their own cloth mask, for example, as has been recommended recently by the Centers for Disease Control. Right. The cloth mask protects the make sure that the virus isn't coming from you to infect another person rather than the virus coming from another person to infect you. Okay. We're taking more of your questions regarding the coronavirus all morning long. Dr. Springate, thank you so much for being with us. Keep texting those questions to 504-529-4444. Time's now six.